Hello guys, so today I'm going to cover promises in jQuery. Um, it's kind of a, a cool topic um, and I'm going to show you uh, what's capable with them. So uh, there's also a really great discussion which I'm going to put a link to uh, on here. Uh, the discussion is going on on GitHub and it relates to uh, the promises A spec. So um, if you want to find out more about promises and how they are used um, traditionally you might want to take a look there, uh, but I'm just going to cover how they work now and what they do. Okay, so I've actually gone ahead and created a little Yeoman uh, demo app <clears throat> to get us started quickly. So basically, we just have an, uh, an Ajax or a button that calls a simple PHP script um, when it's clicked, and uh, we get a little response of some you know, just a list of uh, fruit, oranges, apples, berries, yada, yada, yada. So I have that just wired up right here. And uh, we can sample it just by clicking this, and you can see that we have our success handler. Um, we've added watermelons to the list, and we've console log success, and we've console log the data. So even though originally the, uh, we can, Originally, it only has oranges, apples, and berries. We had watermelon, so I'm just go, gonna go ahead and remove the watermelon for now, and click the button again, and so that's that. All right, now, how do promises come into play, and why would we even want to use them? So, if you didn't already know, the Ajax object returns a promise. Promises have three methods, okay? Um, so promises have a fail, uh, method, a uh, done method, and an always method. And they pretty much do exactly what they say. So we have fail, which is analog analogous to uh, the error, and we have a done, which is uh, pretty much the same thing as success, and uh, we have a always method, uh, always which happens whether every time this is this is fired and it happens at the end of all, all this um, of the uh, cycle here okay so um, how do we do that so there's a couple ways I mean there's a one way of doing that is just creating a promise variable by doing by going like this okay and um, what we what we get back is the promise object, so which means we can do a promise, um, and then we can do our fail method, right? Well, let's go ahead and do a done method, and we'll. This expects a callback. I'm going to discuss why we would want to do this in the first place. So I'll inject the data, and we're going to console log the data. This is going to be a great example. So we're going to go ahead and actually we're going to console log done. Console log uh, done one. There we go. Let's go ahead and click it. We have success and done one. You can see that the data gets passed from the success down into the done. Okay. Um, so now, now that's really cool and everything. Um, but one of the things we want to also check is the ability to be able to check uh, to change the data. So if we change the data here and we add watermelons, which I'll do right here on this line, we'll add watermelons to our list. That new changed um, data object will also be reflected down in the second error, I should say, in the done method. So let's do that. Let's go ahead and click Ajax, and you see that. We started off with oranges, apples, and berries, <clears throat> and then just before the end of the success uh, handler, we added watermelons. It got passed down to our done method, and uh, we got the the new um, the new list with watermelon watermelon added to it. So we can also add another uh, do data dot push uh, bananas. Okay. And we can add another promise, so or another uh, done promise 
<clears throat> and we'll dash call it dot done and a function uh, function boom 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 and pass the data into it and since we added bananas to it we should also see console log data okay so we should call this promise console log done to console log done to all right you see we added uh, on success we had these three then we had the, the first done we added uh, watermelons or uh, data dot push bananas oh yes we had uh, we had watermelons and then on, on the third one the new bananas was added to it so um, you can see that this way we not only can um, add multiple things that will listen for this done event, uh, but that the data that's passed between the done uh, callback or be between the done events uh, can be modified and passed on down a chain. So you know we could have done this another way, and that would have been instead of calling a promise, we would have just attached it there done it this way but you know I personally like the other way I feel it's like uh, we, could remove, we should remove promise do like that uh, I like the other way though because it looks cleaner it's just code looks a lot cleaner you can just go and it's organized okay so now let's take a look at the always so promise Dots always, and it also takes another callback, and we can do just do let's do console dot log always, and this will also take data to it and console dot log data, and you'll see that. When we call always, we also get the modified data. Okay, so what? How is this useful? Why is this useful? So a lot of times, when we um, compartmentalize our code and uh, we modularize it, we'll have a wrap around an AJAX object, and we'll so if we were to call this, uh, let's create an object so far. Uh, ob equals this, and then we have a um, say we have a method that gets right, and we do something like, and then we might have our success handler and error handler. And then we'll just uh, <clears throat> we'll end up um, basically if you don't mind me doing this here. Let's see where does this Ajax engine events there. And so sometimes we'll end up doing this. We'll run some code. And then call our success handler, pass it the data. Now, to me, this has always looked like a anti-pattern, and I don't do that. And then sometimes people will do this and do that. I hate doing that. I think it's awful. I think it's ugly, and uh, it's just not a good way of doing things so um what you'll um where you now it's not that you shouldn't or can't do this it's that um it's just not in my opinion an efficient way of doing it so that's where like things like promises come in handily and um we can leverage them so Let's just get this return, the Ajax object. What we could do instead 
is remove all these callbacks because we're going to be injecting them anyways. All right. Well, let's leave them for now and we'll see how, how this might work. <clears throat> I'll remove these. Okay. And then say that on that we will call uh, um, well, let's pretend uh, this because this is how I've seen it used and then we'll do return like that okay so we'll like run some code up here Turn this uh, for reuse and to kind of modularize and keep our um, our server uh, requests in all in one place. Like say we wanted to, if we were handling some sort of a user object and we wanted to get some properties of the user object from the server or populate the user object, then you know we would use this almost like a like a uh, like a service, then we would uh, put it all in here and just pass in our handler and error. So we could do it this way, and then we would just do um, uh, var obj equals new obj, right? And it would be like obj object dot gets, and then we would just pass in our success handler. Take some data and let me do our error handler or another function in here. We're going to make this work. Okay. <clears throat> now you'll see that. Um, Well, we'll also run some other code in here. So we'll do this data dot push uh, bananas like that. <sighs> okay, let's get started with this. We'll click it. You see what's happened is we've um, clicked this and or clicked the button and it's created this uh, object and then we pass it our our <laughs> Anonymous functions are our success handler and our error handler. Yet, but it just looks ugly. So other than just looking ugly, we also, if we ever needed to add any more functionality to this, either before, during, or after, um, it would be uh, really difficult. We'd have to come in here, and then we start with a lot of coupling and you know solving. It just becomes messy. So one way of solving this that works really well is to use promise. So rather, if we needed to do anything in here, we might still keep that, but we never do this. And if we had um, some sort of constant error function that we want to do, some standard error function, we could do it there. And then we could omit these. All right. We could return our Ajax object. So if our promise equals that. Okay. And then on our promise, rather than passing a success handler and an error handler, we could attach all the handlers we need here with just, uh, uh, let's see, uh, I'm done. And we'll accept. Uh, data in here uh, so I don't know we'll console log the data and then maybe later down the line we also want to um, 
do uh, an, something else with the data, or we want to register something else, some somebody else with that. Uh, we could even do it this way. Okay, so we can uh, we can set up all our all our events in here. So we could add more done events. So promise done done, and do some more functionality in here. But maybe we wanted to listen for something. Say we wanted. Um, say we wanted to uh, register some other event. So say, um, let me go ahead and do this. Actually, actually, what we could do is rather than doing that, we could set, say we wanted to attach another um, Another done event here. Promise dot uh, done. Pass the data around. And so one of the things that this actually helps us with, and if I can spell it, is that um, it helps us um, decouple the code. It helps us modularize the code, and it allows us to add things, um, some add functionality to, um, uh, to code that already exists without having to uh, edit or otherwise uh, couple code up and do all kinds of if else sorts of things. So imagine we, um, most of the time we just want to do this push or some general code in here and we didn't want to pass in a, a callback and pass in an empty callback, we would just omit adding any of these dones, and we can handle just the basic stuff. You're done. Just do that. You're done. Um, in fact, you wouldn't even have to do that. You could just do that. Anyways, uh, I haven't gone into the always and the fail, but uh, and I can go ahead and try and do it right now. So promise dot fail and it also takes another callback and we can just uh, we'll error this out on purpose console.log fail oops let's see uh, I'll just error this out servers and go ahead and yep, get a refresh we have our fail we might also have some other code that we want to run in here or maybe we don't want to have to write an error message. We don't have to and only add one when we really need it. So, I mean, promises do a lot more than this. Um, and I will try to get into all those subjects in another tutorial, but this one's already like 20 minutes. So I wanted to cut it short. Um, but it gives you an idea of what's capable with promises. Another thing that I wanted to show you with promises that I didn't get to show you on this one is uh, setting up um, promises uh, um, so that um, if an event, one thing you should know I should say with promises is that if an event has already happened um, say uh, the done event or the always event has already occurred and you have an, a promise attached to it uh, and if a callback attached to that it'll just trigger immediately it won't wait so I want to show you that, but it's already 20 minutes, and I think I should just cut this video short. All right, I'll make another video on that, and stay tuned.